Mark Burnett is widely considered the godfather of reality television, the man behind groundbreaking shows like Survivor and Shark Tank. But it's his next project that could be the most surprising of all, a series about the Bible. Teaming up with his wife, Roma Downey, the star of the beloved TV series Touched by an Angel, it's a family affair and a leap of faith, as they told me in this candid interview. Behold his mighty hand. Ever since Charlton Heston parted the Red Sea in the Ten Commandments, Hollywood has had a thirst for more. Lead them through the midst of the waters. And now, someone thinks they can do it better. You're fired. Not Donald Trump, but the guy who made him a TV star, reality show guru Mark Burnett. Who changed the television landscape with Survivor. It was to become the ultimate human experiment. Now he's taking on a project truly biblical in scale. Recreating the stories of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation spread out over 10 hours and five Sundays on the cable channel History. To pull it off, he asked for a little help from above. I, um, I, I put some muscle in it. Roma Downey, star of the now TV classic Touched by an Angel, and Burnett's real life wife. You're a famous angel. You're not so famous as an angel. <laughs> But I'm married to an angel. But he's been touched by an angel. <laughs> what is the guy who created Shark Tank and the Survivor? What is he doing, doing the Bible? The Bible is the foundation of this nation. I mean, we have run into people that have thought, believe it or not, that Joan of Arc was Noah's wife, or that Sodom and Gomorrah mm -hmm. lived happily ever after. If nothing else, just to set the record straight. Our shows are family shows. We, we haven't made any shows. We haven't made any shows that's not for families. We have three teenagers. One of the things they said to us when speaking about the special effects, they said, oh, please, whatever you do, don't make the special effects lame. You know, we showed our kids at the beginning of this project a movie we'd grown up on, Ten Commandments. They were rolling their oh, eyes they at the party of They, they thought, couldn't wait to get out of the room. Like, Are you guys kidding? Really what we've done for 2013 is brought fresh visual life into the greatest story ever told. One of the great debates is whether the Bible stories are literal or whether they're symbolic. Are they stories to you or literally true? There's only one way to approach this. You have to take the Bible as a fact. I will crush any rebellion. Any hesitation? Because this is, this is, this, it's, it's well-trod terrain, and it's also treacherous. I mean, Martin Scorsese, Mel Gibson, many people have, have wrecked their ships, uh, at least temporarily, on well, these shoals. You know, listen, making the Bible as a series brings with it a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. We had over 40 theologians and academics advising us to make sure that we were accurate and always telling the stories within the spirit of the book. They're not modest in their predictions about the impact of their new series. I'm telling you, millions will either open the Bible or reopen the Bible. Millions and millions and millions, maybe a billion. A billion new people may open the Bible? I think, to be honest with you, to be, I'm, I'm a very blunt person, I think a billion's a low number. Even with an angel as one of the executive producers, everything has not been easy. We were only about four, six weeks away from beginning principal photography, and we had not yet cast the role of Jesus. And to say that we were anxious about that would be an understatement. I sent out an email, and the, and the headline on the email was looking for Jesus. And, um, and you know, prayer works, and we found yeah the most wonderful actor, Portuguese actor Diogo Morgado, who has breathed such beauty and strength. Change the world. Jesus was cast, but they were still stumped when it came to who would play his mother. I went over to Morocco with my producer's hat firmly on my head. At Mark's encouragement, really, he said to me, I think you're not seeing the obvious. Downey herself stepped into the role. There are a few real world problems to overcome too, like the snakes. 
<laughs> we had so many snakes on our Moroccan set that we had to have a man to come in and clear the locations of snakes and scorpions. These are not Be garden snakes. No, no. These are cobras and vipers. But one snake would be cast in a starring role as Satan, which meant they'd have to talk their new Jesus into letting the snake crawl over him. And so I said to Roma, listen, I know what we do. You lay down, let's let that big snake crawl across you. We'll, we'll take video and photographs of it. We'll show that to the ogre. There's no way he can say no when he sees that you've done it. And that's what works. Is that what you did? Yes. That's so what I did. His first okay. day. I took one for the team. I'm still on the snake crawling across you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Just to slow down here. The survivor family, you know. I, I've dragged this poor woman to more jungles. Listen. And as the survivor family, there has to be a little competition. On the horizon, a whole new slew of Hollywood productions are launching based on the Bible. Spielberg doing Moses, Will Smith, Cain and Abel, and Russell Crowe as Noah. I'm just glad we're a year ahead of all of them. We were talking to Russell Crowe the other night and Roma was laughing with him saying... I teased him, I said, our arc is bigger than your arc. <laughs> <laughs> so have the kids seen it yet? Here's the best news of all. It's last week, uh, two of our kids, one's 15, one's 16, they agreed to go and screen a portion of it last week for their entire high school. I said, what, what, was, the, what was the most heard comment? from your fellow teens at your school. And they said, that's really cool. <laughs> so we felt, hey, we got something right. Because you know what? The Bible is really cool. <laughs> I am coming soon. The Bible premieres on the History Channel this Sunday.